Hi everyone, my name is Alexis Becker and I am one of your International Challenge Masters for the Service Learning Challenge this year. I participated in Destination Imagination for 10 years and this is my 10th year anniversary as a volunteer. I'm really excited to see you all at Global Finals. I care about this program a lot and I'm sure you have some amazing solutions in store for us. And hi everyone, I'm Johanna Nicola. I'm your other International Challenge Master. I am also a former participant and longtime volunteer. And I keep doing this because I just love seeing everything that the teams come up with. And I can't wait to get to Global Finals and see your team solutions. Before we get to Global Finals, we wanna talk about some commonly overlooked requirements of the challenge so that everyone is super prepared walking into the tournament. So the first um, overlooked requirement that I wanna talk about is the difference between the community location analysis and the location strategy. While these both have location in the name, they are two different and unique uh, requirements for the challenge. The community location analysis is a process of teams collecting information about how location affects their community and community need. And you can read more about this in the challenge. The location strategy is a strategy that leverages location to maximize impact, uh, the impact of the team's project. And so you'll find these um, on your tournament data forms, question three and four. And we ask that when you fill out questions three and four on your tournament data form to take time to review the community location analysis and the location strategy in the project and make sure that you're answering these questions completely and thoroughly so appraisers know what to look for when they are appraising your presentation. Okay, and so now let's talk about the fantasy map for a bit. We're really excited to see the fantasy map that your teams have created. But first we wanna remind teams that while you may have multiple maps in your presentation or even multiple maps that follow the specifications for a fantasy map, as described in the challenge, only one fantasy map will earn points for section 5B. So if your team has more than one map, they should make sure to say on the tournament data form, which is the fantasy map for scoring. In addition, as your teams will know from section 2B, the fantasy map must use technical methods to display, reveal, and or represent the progress of the character or characters on the quest and or other location information from the story. At tournaments this year, we noticed that not all teams were providing enough detail on their tournament data form about what technical methods the fantasy map would use. Your team should make sure to include that information so appraisers know what to look for. Appraisers will, of course, watch for what technical methods are used or attempted during the presentation and ask your team questions after the pre presentation as needed as well to make sure they understand the technical methods the team has used. Now I'll turn it back to Alexis. Thank you. I want to talk a little bit about team choice elements. Now, team choice elements can be reviewed in their entirety in Section 3C of the challenge, and I do recommend this. But for the most part, team choice elements can be anything that the team wants them to be. That's why the team gets the choice for the element. There is really one thing that team choice elements cannot be, though, and that's that they cannot be an already required element of the challenge. So, for example, a team could not choose to have their fantasy map scored as a team choice element because that is already a required element of the challenge. However, team choice elements may be a single unique part of a required element. Um, or they can be a larger item that includes the required elements. So for example, teams could have a backdrop scored, even though the fantasy map may be a small part of the backdrop, or the teams could choose to have artwork on their fantasy map scored, even though that it is, it is a small part of the fantasy map, which is a scored element. We ask that if there is some of this overlap between a scored uh, required element and the team choice element, that you be very specific on your tournament data form to differentiate or separate between the two items. So appraisers know exactly what you want scored for the team choice element, and we know that it does not overlap with another required element. Okay, so now for an exciting way we're going to celebrate all the service learning teams at Global Finals. We know how hard your teams have been working both to carry out the project and also design a presentation for the tournaments. And so while the team's presentation is the focus of appraiser scoring, we want to make sure that the teams also um, get to have recognized and celebrated the um, work that they have done on their projects. And so that is gonna happen through a special tradition that we have for service learning at Global Finals called the Impact Wall. 
So as each team arrives in the pre-prep area before their presentation, they're going to have the opportunity to write or draw a re rep representation of the focus of their project and some impact that their project had, something about the project results. So the team representations of project impacts will collect on this impact wall and be, will, will be there for everyone to see and celebrate as they walk through the halls at the tournament. So you can see on the screen here how amazing this visual display of teams collective impact looks. We can't wait for your team to add their statements or drawings of impact to this year's impact wall. We'll have all the markers and papers ready to go when your team arrives in the pre-prep area. Now let's turn to a few topics that came in through the questions that some of you submitted in advance. So the first question that we want to walk through that you were all able to submit to us has to do with how teams integrate project information into their presentation. So for this challenge, teams had to integrate information about their community location analysis, project goal, location strategy, and project evaluation into their presentation. Teams could also choose to integrate other information about their project. Now this question asked if teams should directly name these scored requirements during their presentation, such as um, actually naming the location strategy in their presentation. It is entirely up for teams to choose how they integrate information. Some teams integrate information very literally, some teams integrate it very metaphorically, and it's the team's choice how to do so. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Okay, so um, we also had some questions about use of electronic equipment and when teams will be able to plug electronic equipment in for their presentation. So teams may use electronic equipment during the presentation, including but not limited to projectors, microphones, speakers, instruments, computers. None of this electrical equipment is going to be supplied, like everything else the team would need to bring what they want to use in their presentation. Um, and But the one thing that will be supplied is one three-pronged electrical outlet in the format of an extension cord, which will be available to the team at the back of the presentation area for use during the presentation. It is important to note that teams will not be allowed to plug their electric equipment into this outlet until after the eight minute presentation time begins. And then now back to Alexis for one more submitted question. Our last question has to do with um, procedure after the team's pr presentation has ended. So after you finish your presentation, the appraisers will come up to talk to you and ask you questions about your hard work and get to see a little bit more of behind the scenes of how you developed your solution. I recommend seeing Rules of the Road Section 9C for more information about tournament flow. But it's important to keep in mind that due to the tournament schedule, appraisers only have a few minutes to talk to each team after their presentation ends. And oftentimes, appraisers have very specific questions that they're seeking answers for. Now, when appraisers come up to chat with the team, teams should share information about how they created their solution and things that they found very fun and interesting and things that they wanna share. Appraisers may have time for teams to talk about specific things about their solution that they want to discuss, but it's important to remember that appraisers will have to leave after a couple minutes to, so that they can submit the scores for your presentation. That was our last question. We hope that this video was really informative and helpful so that you know how to best prepare for your day at the Global Finals Tournament. We are absolutely over the moon, excited to see you and see the uncharted solutions that you've developed. Um, we'll see you um, very shortly.